Milovic and Stovikin were the ones that turned the surface dream on snow into a reality. They were the first to do this. Dimitri was a real innovator, light years in front of everyone else. And the boys said, yeah, they, you can do this on them, you can do that. They were, we were really hyped. The only thing we knew was surfing, so let's surf this thing. Pulled into the first drop and hung on, and it was just Nirvana. Something that you dream about. A wave can't be that big. You've got to remember that this board has no edges. Because your feet were free, um, it allowed you to actually have more natural stance. Unfortunately, our rebel surfing antics were not approved of by the authorities. The authorities stipulated these boards weren't going on the lifts. They just saw them as some foreign missile. So long as we had skis on our feet when we got onto the lift and got off the lift, we were within the law. Yeah, I'd get Nat's little skis and I'd put them on my back and have to ski down while Nat had the freedom of riding this winter stick down, unencumbered, and I was his mule. The problem was that only one of us could surf. So to get over that, we decided we'd hike. And we had this new thing that we could do, and it was all ours. We had adventures. We fell down mine shafts, avalanche areas. We explored a, a lot of that country that had never been surfed before. In the 70s, everything was changing. In that time, surfing on snow became a reality. The authorities were adamant that snow surfing would never have a place in the ski areas. But when that story was published, rebel surfers made the crossover to a sport which would eventually flourish into modern snowboarding. <laughs> 